Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello, thank you. It's very, very good to be here. We've reached the grand final of Brain of Britain 2023. Four months of heats and semi-finals have led to this moment when our four survivors are about to find out which of them will be the 70th BBC Brain of Britain since the idea for the quiz was conceived by John P. Wynne, an exile from Berlin in the early 1950s. Let's meet our finalists again. Hello, I'm Dan Adler and I'm a computer plumber from Farnham in Surrey. Hello, I'm Eleanor Ayres. I'm a solicitor originally from Yorkshire and I now live in Cambridgeshire. Hello, I'm Colin Kidd, an accountant from Bushy in Hertfordshire. Hello, I'm George Scratchard. I'm an insight analyst and I live in Barking. Welcome back, all of you. There can only be one winner, but it goes without saying that you're all winners multiple times over by having got this far in a very competitive series. So you all deserve the warmest congratulations before we even get started. There are no variations in the rules just because it's the final. You've been here often enough for me not to have to explain things to you. So we'll lose no time in getting the contest underway. And the first round starts with you, Dan Adler. Before Liz Truss, which 19th century UK Prime Minister had previously held the record for shortest term in office? George Canning. Yes, Canning died in office of uh, tuberculosis in 1827 after serving 119 days. Truss achieved 49 days and was beaten by a lettuce. <laughs> Encouragement for the Greens, perhaps. Hooke's law, Hooke's law is concerned with which physical property of materials? Um, elasticity. Yes. Yeah. It basically states that the deformation of an elastic material is proportional to the force exerted upon it to produce the distortion. Operational since 2022, what is known for short in astronomical circles as the JWST? It's the James Webb Space Telescope floating on the dark side of the moon. Which actor played Colonel Tom Parker in the 2022 film biopic Elvis? Tom Hanks. Yes. In ballet, what name is given to the position in which the dancer stands on one leg with the other raised behind the body and bent at the knee at an angle of 90 degrees? The position was derived by Carlo Blasis from the Statue of Mercury by Giovanni da Bologna. Eek. An arabesque. It's not, I'm afraid. George Scratcher. Crack. No. Eleanor Ayers. Ronde Jump. No, it's called Attitude. Or the Attitude. Eleanor Ayers, your question. The outlying territories of which island country include Rodriguez Island, Cargados Carajos Shoals, and the Agalega Islands? Mauritius. The Republic of Mauritius, yes. The name of which dinosaur translates from the Latin, more or less, as quick thief? Velociraptor. Yes. In April 2022, which Royal Shakespeare Company production, based upon a 1988 Japanese animated film, broke the Barbican's record for most tickets sold in a single day? My Neighbour Totoro? Yes, written and directed by Hay <laughs> Hayao Mizakari. The fictional Isle of Burke is the main location in which series of best-selling children's novels of the 21st century? How to Train Your Dragon. By Cressida Cowell, yes. Who composed the anthem Make a Joyful Noise for the coronation service of King Charles III? Judith Weir? No. Colin Kidd? Paul McCartney? No. Dan Adler? Uh, Anna Meredith? No. George Scratcher? Harrison Burt Whistle? No. It was Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber. Oh. <laughs> uh, Colin Kidd's question. From 1972 to 1977, the Ideal Toy Company claimed to have sold over $125 million worth of toys and merchandise based on which American motorcycle stunt performer? Evil can evil. Yes. What was the middle name of the polar explorer Robert F. Scott, 
born in 1868. Falcon. Yes. Which Hindu deity is known as the preserver? Vishnu. It is Vishnu, yes. The name comes from the Sanskrit meaning all pervasive. At the last count and to the nearest million, how many calls per annum are made from Great Britain's remaining public phone boxes? Um, one million. No. Eleanor Ayers? Three million. Nope. George Scratchard? Five million. Is the right answer. Well done. Not nearly as many as once was, for obvious reasons. And yet there are times when you'd be glad to find a still usable phone box. George Scratchard's turn. David Dinkins became the first black mayor of which city in 1990? New York City. New York City. He died in 2020. In 2022, the writer Shehan Karuna Tilaka won the Booker Prize for his second novel, The Seven Moons of Who? Mali Almeida. Well done. He became the second writer of Sri Lankan origin to win the award after Michael Ondaatje, who was born there but has lived in Canada since he was 18. In Russian literature, how are Dmitry, Ivan, Alyosha, and Smerdyakov collectively known? The Brothers Karamazov. In the novel by Fyodor Dostoevsky, yes. In physics, whose law states that the volume of a given mass of gas at constant temperature is directly proportional to the absolute thermodynamic temperature? Boyle's law? No. Colin Kidd? Charles Law? Charles Law, yes. Or I would have accepted Gay Lussac's law, but Charles Law it is. And that's the end of the first round with a lot of points having been scored. <coughs> and they've been scored in an amazingly even fashion because everybody has four. <laughs> Dan Adler, you come next. And the next round begins with music for you, too. 2023 is the 25th anniversary of the release of a charity album called Stranger Than Fiction, which showcases the vocal talents of various writers. It includes this duet between an English writer and aristocrat and an American memoirist, poet, and civil rights activist. Here, they put their spin on Right Said Fred, a song popularized by Bernard Cribbins. Can you tell me their names? Right Said Fred, both of us together, one each him and steady as we go. Tried to shift it, couldn't even lift it, we was getting nowhere, and so we had a cup of tea. I, I can't even, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure that they did either, but they got there. <laughs> Anybody going to have a guess at this? George Scratchett. Uh, John Lewis is the, the American and the Duke of Devonshire is the aristocrat. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely picture, but no. Eleanor Ayers? Julian Fellows and John Lewis. Mm, nope. Yes, Colin Kidd. John Lewis and... Arthur Askey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm going to tell you, and I can scarcely believe this myself, it was Jessica Mitford and Maya Angelou. <laughs> the two were close friends for three decades, but not close friends with Bernard Cribbins, I don't suppose. <laughs> anyway, wow. that was it, and I've never heard that before. Ellen Ayers, in the book of Genesis, which tall structure was built in the land of Shinar after the flood? The Tower of Babel? Yes. Which novel am I describing? Published in 1936, it was the top-selling work of fiction in the USA in both 1936 and 37, and won a Pulitzer Prize in 1937. It was made into an Academy Award-winning film in 1939, and yet was the only book the author had published while alive. Gone with the Wind? By Margaret Mitchell. That's right. According to his diary entry for the 4th of September 1666, what specific foodstuff did Samuel Pepys bury in his garden during the Great Fire of London? A wheel of cheese. Uh, not quite specific enough. Stilton? No. 
Colin Kidd? Parmesan it cheese. It was. That's the important thing, I think. Uh, the Parmesan cheese. My Parmesan cheese as well as my wine and some other things, he recorded. Colin Kidd, in the context of the measurement of personal physical fitness, what's denoted by the initials BMI? Body mass index. Exactly right, yes. Which actress is listed in Guinness World Records as being both the first actress to win an acting Oscar for depicting an Oscar-winning actress, and also the first actress to be nominated twice for playing the same character in different films? Anne Hathaway. Mm, no. George Scratcher. Judy Dench. No. Dan Adler. Kate Blanchett. Yes, she won the 2005 Best Supporting Actress for her portrayal of Catherine Hepburn in Aviator, and she played Elizabeth I in both 1998's Elizabeth and 2007's Elizabeth the Golden Age. George Scratchard now. In which British TV drama series did criminal psychologist Dr. Edward Fitzgerald declare, I drink too much, I smoke too much, I gamble too much, I am too much? Cracker? Yes, <laughs> unforgettably played by Robbie Coltrane. It was. Which Hollywood actress's husbands included Mickey Rooney and Frank Sinatra? Mia Farrow? No. Dan Adler? Ava Gardner? Yes, she only had one other husband, the band leader Artie Shaw. But for Artie, Ava was the fifth wife of eight. <laughs> End of another round. And the scores, in a sense, have barely changed. George Scratchett has five, the other three have six. <laughs> well, loath though you all might be to suspend the contest at that point, let's do so for just a couple of minutes because it's time to test your collective knowledge in the feature we call Beat the Brains. By tradition, in the final, the listener setting the questions for this part of the quiz is none other than the reigning champion. So thank you, Sarah Trevathan, Brain of Britain 2022, for these. Sarah might not have many more minutes to go before she surrenders her title, but let's see if she can have one last laugh and outwit you with these two completely unrelated questions. Here's the first. The Cornubian batholith is the name given to a mass of granite rock that lies beneath the landmass of Devon and Cornwall. In most places it's covered by younger rocks, but there are outcrops of the ancient granite coming through at various numerous locations. If the most easterly of these visible outcrops is Dartmoor, which is the most westerly? Bodmin, perhaps? That was my first Bodmin's thought. Bodmin's sort of... It, Bodmin's sort yeah, of it's not of, very uh, west of it, is it? No. The, it's not Land's End. Lizard? I th thought Lizard isn't really a... Is that your fault? You choose. I, I, it's a toss-up between Bodmin and Land's End. But Let's I, go Land's End, then. I, I think Bodmin, because the, the question's asking for a higher... It is. So... Well, go for it. <laughs> you, you take your pick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, George. Okay, I think that most of us seem to prefer Land's End, so... <laughs> OK. Well, most of us are wrong anyway. So. <laughs> no, it's the Isles of Scilly you're forgetting. Uh, um, yes, there's another outcrop further west again, but it's, it's below the surface of the Atlantic. The other outcrops from east to west are, as you said, Bodmin Moor, St Austell, Carn Menalis Hill, Tregoning Godolphin, and Penwith Land's End. Yes, right. Sarah's second question has nothing to do with geology. You might be relieved to learn. It's on that always fruitful topic of the Oscars. Can you name a parent and child who sang the songs from separate movies that won the Oscar for Best Original Song in consecutive years? Harrison. Yes, Harrison. Harrison. Noel Harrison. It was two years apart, I thought. Mm. Harrison... When the movies were two years apart, but they were consecutive Oscar years. Oh, really? OK. I don't know. I'm not just suggesting. Yeah. Anyway. So I'll go without this. We think it's Rex Harrison and Noel Harrison. Do you remember the song? Uh, Wimbles of Your Mind and... Oh, something from My Fair Lady, I think. Mm. Get me to the church. Oh, no, no, no. I'll talk no, to the animals. Talk to the talk animals. Talk to the animals from yeah. Dr. Doolittle. Yeah. That was Rex, yes. And Wimbles of Your Mind from the Thomas Crown Affair. Town of, yes, the Thomas Crown Affair. That was Noel Harrison, yes. So, wow. Thank you for your question, Sarah. And well done for beating the brains with the first one. You slipped that one past our formidable finalists this year. 
We won't have to wait many more minutes to find out who's going to succeed you as Brain of Britain, but we and our radio theatre audience send you our heartfelt congratulations once again and this outgoing champion's round of applause. Let's get back to the final. With the scores as they stood before that little interlude, we resume the contest with you, Dan. In the government of the United States, if both the president and the vice president are unable to perform their office for whatever reason, who is next in line to take over? Speaker of the House of Representatives. Is the right answer. In 2017, who became the first African-American to achieve the so-called triple crown of acting? An Oscar, a Tony, and an Emmy. Is it Viola Davis? It was. She has, in fact, won one Oscar, Best Supporting, for her role in Fences, two Tonys, and one Emmy. In which decade did Dennis the Menace first appear in the Beano comic? 1950s. Yes. Win Monath and Winter Filleth are old English names for which month of the year? January. No. George Scratcher? December. No. Eleanor Ayers? February. Nope. Colin Kidd? November. Not quite. It's October. Very well. <laughs> The names mean the month when wine was made and winter full moon. This full moon was considered to be the start of winter. Ellen Ayers, in October 2023, BBC Radio 2 were at Cardiff's Hoddenot Hall to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. During musical performances by the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, the host, Joe Wiley, discussed the show's famous theme music with Peter Howell from the Radiophonic Workshop. Can you name the person he's paying tribute to here who arranged Ron Grainer's theme by swapping traditional musical instruments for electronic sounds? He went on holiday having written a couple of lines on some manuscript paper, and when he came back from holiday, he couldn't believe what she'd done. The effect was amazing. She was taking very, uh, quite primitive sound sources. It really was painstaking work and she, she went to the most enormous amount of trouble to get the dynamics and everything in it. it it's a wonderful, wonderful job. Delia Derbyshire. It was. Which year of the 21st century saw the then Prince of Wales marry Camilla Parker Bowles, Rafa Nadal win his first French Open, and David Cameron replace Michael Howard as leader of the Conservative Party? 2005. Is the right answer. Well done, yes, well remembered. In November 1943, the inhabitants of a village in Dorset were told that they were required to leave their homes within 28 days as the area was to be used for military training. The villagers left, believing they would one day be able to return, but this never happened, and the village, which remains deserted, is today known as Dorset's Ghost Village. What is the name of this village? Fairfield? No. No sh head shaking. It's called Tynum. And a note on the church door read, please treat the church and houses with care. We have given up our homes where many of us lived for generations to help win the war, to keep men free. We shall return one day and thank you for treating the village kindly. All very sad. Colin Kidd, we're familiar with Bollywood as the word for the Indian movie industry, a play on Hollywood, of course, but which country's film industry is referred to by the term Nollywood? Nigeria. Yes. The 2023 Tour de France started in which city? Bilbao. Yes, it did. There are only two letters that don't appear anywhere on the periodic table. Can you name either of them? J. J is one, yes, or Q. For a time, element 114 had the placeholder name Ununquadium, which did have a Q in its symbol, but it's been officially named Flerovium since 2012. In 1947, the artist Martin Langsdorff, the wife of the nuclear physicist Alexander Langsdorff, designed which ominous symbolic object for the cover of the journal The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists? 
The uh, atom bomb? No. George Scratcher? It's the mushroom cloud? No. Dana, Dana. The doomsday clock. The doomsday clock is right, marking the current closeness of the end of the world. The time on the clock is updated each January. Originally set at seven minutes to midnight in 1947, the clock swung back to 17 minutes in 1991. And as of this year, 2023, a somewhat chilling 90 seconds. George Stratford, Paul Muller was awarded the 1948 Nobel Prize for Medicine for his discovery of which chemical first thought to have positive benefits but later proven to be quite the reverse? Cholesterol? No. Any guesses? No. It was DDT, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. Here are the scores now. Now they've changed a little bit. George Scratchett has five. Eleanor Ayers, eight. Colin Kidd, nine. Dan Avila, ten. <laughs> and I'm very sorry to say, folks, this has to be the last round of this final. Dan Adler, your question. Which ancient world heritage site in what's now Iran is the location of the ruins of the Apadana Palace, the Gate of All Nations, and the Hall of a Hundred Columns? Persepolis. Persepolis is right. Which two-word term said to have been coined in 1845 by an American journalist named John L. O'Sullivan is used for the name of the unofficial doctrine that characterized the USA's attitude towards territorial expansion in the 19th century. Manifest destiny. Yes. By what name is August J. Yeager referred to in the title of a piece of music first performed in 1899? Nimrod. Nimrod is the hunter of legend, and Jaeger means hunter in German. He was a music publisher and a friend of Elgar. What was the name given to the protests that took place in West Wales between 1838 and 44, where farm workers disguised in women's clothes attacked and destroyed toll gates? The Rebecca Riots. Those were they, yes. The song, When Icicles Hang by the Wall, appears in which Shakespeare play? Ooh. Hamlet. No. Eleanor Ayres? Winter's Tale. No. Colin Kidd? Measure for measure. No. George, have a go. Love's Labour's Lost. Is right, yes. <laughs> you might indeed expect The Winter's Tale, but it wasn't. Eleanor Ayers, 140 years ago this year, a book for children was published by an Italian author called Carlo Lorenzini, under the pen name Carlo Collodi, which he took from the Tuscan town in which he spent his childhood. What was the book? Pinocchio. The Adventures of Pinocchio, yes. In Islamic architecture, which part of a mosque derives its name from an Arabic word meaning beacon? Minaret. Yes. What was the capital of Japan before Tokyo assumed that position in the late 1860s? Kyoto. Yes, as is often noted, an anagram of Tokyo. In the FA Cup final, what was first done by Bert Turner in 1946, then again by Tommy Hutchison in 1981, and again by Gary Mabbott in 1987? Singing the national anthem? No. Colin Kidd? Scored an own goal, and a goal for his own team. Scoring, in other words? For both teams. For, for both sides, yes. A goal and an old goal. That's the right answer. And it's your turn for music, Colin. You get to hear a punchy little number with a question to follow. That rendition of the Stax soul classic Knock on Wood was by a boxer who won a gold medal at the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. He was undisputed world heavyweight champion from 1970 to 73. His backing band was called the Knockouts, but can you name him? Joe Frazier. It was. 
Smoking Joe Frazier and the Knockouts. What name is given to the vocal technique, a type of ornamentation used in religious singing for centuries that's made a noticeable comeback in modern pop music, particularly that of black America? Yodeling? No. George Stratcher? Tremolo? No. Ellen Ayers? Coloratura? No. Dan Adler? Descant? No, it's melisma the singing of a single syllable while moving through a long series of notes. It can be heard in a range of music from Handel to Beyonce. George Strachard now, in 2023, which country became the 31st member of NATO? Finland. Yes, popular support for joining NATO dramatically increased in the aftermath of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A person suffering from enophobia, O-E-N-O, -E phobia, has a fear of or aversion to what? Wine. Wine. What is this? In China, it's called the Silver River. In the Kalahari Desert, it is known as the backbone of the night. And to the Estonians and Finns, it's the pathway of the birds. Lightning? No. Dan Adler? The Milky Way? Is the correct answer. And that brings us to the end of the 2023 final of Brain of Britain. And these are the final scores. George Scratchard, eight points. Colin Kidd, 11 points. Eleanor Ayers, 11 points. Dan Adler, 15. <laughs> It is Dan Adler who becomes the 70th brain of Britain. Many, many congratulations to you, Dan. And would you please come up and accept the handsome Brain of Britain Silver Trophy? I'm sure our audience here at the Radio Theatre will join me in thanking the other three finalists for a wonderful contest and for playing such an impressive part in our anniversary series. Brain of Britain will return in 2024, and I hope you will make a point of doing so too. In the meantime, from our new champion, Dan Adler, and all of us here, it's goodbye. <laughs>